everybody it's been a long time since I've done a video but I'm back and I'm here with your tutorial Tuesday video <laughs> I want to tell you guys about stencils today and stencils using freezer paper specifically. I really like doing fabric painting for a lot of my costumes and other craft projects and stencils I find are really handy. Unfortunately with a lot of designs with a lot of detail or internal shapes it's really hard to get a stencil done. For example I had a logo for a uh, convention and in order to translate that into a stencil, I had to have a bunch of bars going through the gear shape and bars going through the zero shape. And while that looks okay, there's the uh, finished product there. Sometimes you don't want all those extra gaps in your design. One of the advantages of using freezer paper, aside from being easy to find and relatively cheap, you can get these things at the grocery store in the section with saran wrap and foil, is that it adheres to the fabric and allows you to do some really detailed designs. I used freezer paper for my Hawkeye t-shirt, which is a two-part stencil for one for the black and one for the heart. And so it allowed me to do all the little inside shapes on the letters with no problem. My Isabel shirt was also a freezer paper stencil. There was a lot of detail in that. And I also used a stencil for my Cersei dress. Now this looks different, but I used freezer paper outline on all of that embroidery is all painted on as well. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that today. Let's get started. You probably won't need any special tools uh, for this if you already do a lot of crafts. You're gonna need a basic cutting mat because you'll be using a craft knife to cut things out. You're also gonna need just some scissors for the freezer paper, a drawing implement, and you'll need paint brushes. I prefer to use stencil brushes, but you can use sponges or a regular paintbrush as long as you're careful not to put too much paint around the edges of your stencil. Other materials you'll need, your box of freezer paper. You will need a design. Uh, today we're gonna do the Heartless design from Kingdom Hearts and something to stencil on. So I have got a black t-shirt in which I am going to paint that on today. And of course you'll need some paint. Uh, you can use fabric paint, like this set of color I have, or you can use regular craft acrylics uh, mixed with textile medium. You do wanna make sure that you have the textile medium uh, in there so that when you wash it, all of the paint won't just immediately wash right off. Oh, and I forgot, don't forget, you need an iron, that's very important, and an ironing board or another heat proof surface as your choice. And that's it. So the first step is to cut off a piece of your freezer paper. It comes in a big roll. And you're gonna need it at least the size of your design, plus extra around the edges. You'll notice the camera doesn't pick it up very well, but there's a shiny side and a plain papery side to the freezer paper. You're going to want to trace your design using your pencil or pen onto the paper side. So plastic side down, this is very important because the plastic side, that is what's going to stick to your shirt after you iron this. So we're just gonna go ahead and start tracing this out. Now it's generally helpful to tape this down so you don't have to worry about it shifting and wiggling. But I'm just gonna trace it out and take my chances today. This particular design has a lot of straight edges to it. You could totally use a ruler to make this easier as well. So we're just finishing up the bottom here. That last point. And there we go. So this is the first step of your stencil completed. is cutting it out and the key point in all this this is what makes this work is not to cut everything all the way out we want little tiny i mean tiny fractions of a millimeter uh, areas where it cuts don't connect and it's really convenient to do that at corners to take one stroke along this line here and when i come back to do the other side i'm gonna not actually connect those two cuts 
at that corner. Now this, this particular design has a lot of corners where separate cuts can join, so that's convenient. Uh, but there are also some really straight, smooth edges. And whatever design you might want to do, uh, there might also be a lot of smooth, straight edges. So I'm just going to add in a connection where I separate my cuts like there, or here, or here. And actually having those marked on there is going to be helpful once we actually peel this apart uh, once it's done. So you can see that I've cut out this bottom portion but it's still being held together by those little just threads of paper there. So with all that in mind, uh, let's finish cutting out, or almost cutting out, this pencil. Okay, so this is the last line, I think. I'm gonna have to double check because when you don't actually cut anything out, sometimes you can miss areas. Like I've got everything done. You can see that it's still, it's cut, but it's still holding together. And so what this means is when you iron it down onto your shirt, everything is gonna be in exactly the right place. All the central bits are gonna be where they need to be. All the swirly bits are gonna be exactly where they need to be. And then only once it's ironed on, then you go in and just touch the paper to cut those extra pieces where it's connected and peel off the excess. And now it is finally time to actually finish cutting out your stencil. And it's actually handy to keep this on the ironing board. It's a little bit squishy. So you're just gonna go through and poke out all the paper bits that are connecting. So the shirt is just gonna squish underneath and the paper is going to cut. So you're not actually cutting into your fabric, just cutting out the paper. So I'll show you. Some of these bits are finicky because there's plastic as well as just paper here. And so that's how that's going to peel away. There, all right. So I think that's everything. All right. Oh, oh, of course, that last one. There we go. There we go. So, there we have it. All the central pieces are exactly where they should be, and we're gonna have a perfect heartless design after pulling that out. And I like to give it another pass on the iron just to make sure we didn't peel up any of those edges while peeling off our design. Now, it's ready to paint. I don't have uh, fabric paint in my stash uh, for the colors I want. I'm just gonna do a coat of white as a base because red doesn't look very well on black and then put the red over top. So I'm mixing my uh, regular craft acrylics with uh, fabric medium or textile medium and instructions are on the bottles of your uh, medium. So mix it as instructed. Just so the paint doesn't soak uh, through onto the back of the shirt, I'm just gonna put some scrap paper underneath my stencil. I'm sure everything's covered there. Starting with uh, the white for my base color and my stencil brush. Get paint on it, wipe most of the paint off onto my scrap paper here. And you wanna paint directly down. So don't wanna get much paint under the stencil. And if you have ironed this down properly, that's gonna be very difficult to do. But using a stencil brush and painting directly down also just helps avoid <clears throat> any problems, including frogs in said throats. Actually, this does not help that problem at all. 
So this paint is going on fairly thin, so it should be dry enough to start tossing a second coat on now that I've finished the whole design. So I just gotta let this dry in between coats. It's not giving a very solid white. Like I said, we're doing a white base coat, but it is gonna be enough to uh, stop the red from just completely soaking into the black and totally disappearing. We just gotta be patient. This is ridiculous. Try and heat dry it. Heat dry. <laughs> okay, so I think the uh, base layer here is uh, dry enough to go in with a red and let's see how this goes. Hopefully better than the white. <laughs> Second coats. So obviously we're getting a much brighter, more solid color, but as it dries and soaks into the fabric, it will uh, dull out a little bit. Now I want sort of the uh, variation in color that comes with using a stencil brush or a sponge, but you can definitely get a solid color out of this as well. It just takes more careful coats and thicker paint. All right, so our paint is dry. It's time to peel this away and see what it looks like. Uh, I'm just gonna start now again. And it's just a matter of peeling these pieces off. Sometimes it can be hard to get under a corner because of the paint, but this looks like it's gonna work out pretty well for me. And there we go. So now just the last thing, while I still have it on the ironing board, I am going to just iron this to set that paint in there. And there we go. So we have a lovely Heartless logo on the hip of our shirt. In terms of keeping your shirt or whatever your project is uh, looking well through lots of wears, there isn't anything super special you need to do. You're going to need to heat set it once you're finished on your painting so you can either iron it. I suggest using a pressing cloth so you don't have the paint directly on your iron face or putting it through the dryer so that heat is generally what sets the textile medium or other fabric binding mediums in your fabric paint to the shirt so once you wash it it shouldn't wash off and just other things recommending washing them inside out uh if you're really protective of your thing you can hand wash it generally i treat my stuff like regular laundry and i don't have any problems for all the times i've talked about that using freezer paper to make a stencil is a great idea there is a uh, one time i can think of where it's definitely not is when you have to make a lot of uh something or you're going to be reusing your stencil a lot you can peel it off and reuse it once, maybe twice, depending on how well your paper is stuck to your fabric. But again, getting everything to line up on the inside again isn't gonna work very well, and you're gonna wanna put something like a pressing cloth between the paper and your iron because it will already have paint on it. Now this stencil I'm doing is all one solid color, so I mean aside from the natural variations you get from the stippling, it's just gonna be red. But you can totally do more than one color and fades and stuff like that. Again, we're going back to the gear logo. I've got sort of yellows and oranges all blended in and giving it more dimension and more visual interest. Something like this, the design is kind of too narrow and delicate and there's not really enough space Base there to do that too, but I do have my next stencil I'm planning is gonna be this one. Although this doesn't have the negative space that really benefits from the freezer paper method, it, all these internal swirls and stuff is gonna be a lot easier to deal with having everything stuck down and then peeling off the inside like we did here. And this one, because there's so much more space, it'd be uh, really easy and interesting to do more of a fade colors on the tips of the spikes here or in the internal swirl. And again, just giving it more visual interest uh, as an artistic choice. So I hope this was super useful to you. If you have any questions, please drop them below in comments. All of my tutorials 
and my whole gallery of projects is at mysherrycostumes.com. I am at mysherrycostumes at gmail.com. You can reach me on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Tumblr, all at mysherrycostumes. And thanks a lot, guys. See you later. Bye.